right to the member statements. I see member from Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise in the House today and deliver my first member statement. <laughs> On Friday, August 19, I had the privilege of joining the Juno Beach Centre Association, a non-profit organization that is based in my riding of Burlington. The association owns and operates the Juno Beach Centre in Normandy, France. The JBCA plays a vital role in commemorating Canadians who served during the Second World War. Last Friday, the Juno Beach Centre Association announced they were the recipient of $119,500 through the Ontario Trillium Foundation's Resilient Communities Fund. It was an honour to be a part of a special funding announcement on the 80th anniversary of Dieppe. This grant has helped the JBCA complete a, di a digital educational resource who tells the story of Dieppe, focusing on how the soldiers from Ontario and across Canada made the ultimate sacrifice on one of Canada's darkest days, the Dieppe Raid. Congratulations to the Juno Beach Centre Association on receiving this grant, and thank you for educating adults, children, and future generations about the role Canada played on the world stage. Thank you so much. <laughs> member Statement, member from Ottawa West Nipi. Thank you, Speaker. Since being elected, I've had the opportunity to meet with many community service organizations in my riding of Ottawa West Nepean. The Caldwell Family Centre, Jewish Family Services, the Carlington Community Health Centre, Meals on Wheels, and Britannia Woods Community House are among the many organizations doing amazing work to support seniors, newcomers, people living with disabilities, and low-income communities. But, Speaker, they are all facing a situation where demand for their services is soaring due to the rising cost of living, the challenge of finding affordable housing, and the increasing rate of poverty. The Caldwell Family Centre, for instance, has experienced an almost 200 per cent increase in demand over the past two years. But funding for many of these community organizations has been frozen and is not keeping pace with the demand. I urge this government to take immediate action to address the affordability crisis, to pass the Rent Stabilization Act, to double Ontario Works and ODSP, increase the minimum wage, and to support the many community organizations that are providing such vital supports to vulnerable members of our communities. Thank you. Member Statement. Member from Whitby. Well, thank you, Speaker. This past weekend, Whitby resident Mike Shorman made history when he became the first athlete in Canadian with disabilities to cross all five Great Lakes on a stand-up paddleboard in a single summer. Wow. Good Now, Speaker, Mike started his journey in May at Lake Erie before paddling through uh, Lake Huron, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, and finally Lake uh, Ontario this past Saturday. Time and time again, Speaker, Mike demonstrated his perseverance and resiliency when faced with difficult obstacles. He would simply not be denied. Mike, you're an inspiration for us all. Thank you for your efforts in raising funds and awareness for youth mental health. Residents across Ontario and Canada are so proud of you, absolutely so proud of you. Speaker and colleagues, please join me in congratulating Mike Shorman on his historical feat and celebrating this amazing achievement with him, his family, and many supporters. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Member Statement, member from Humber River Black Bay. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to rise for my first member statement since my re-election. The riding of Humber River Black Creek is my lifelong home and the place I love the most. I want to once again thank my neighbours, fellow community members, family, friends and all my supporters for putting their trust in me to be their voice in this chamber. Representing my lifelong home is truly my life's greatest honour. Speaker, I am joined here today with my wife, Alexandra, and two sons, four-year-old Alexander and one-year-old Ilya. And just as becoming an MPP is my greatest honour, the birth of our two sons is my life's greatest joy. But, Speaker, my children are here with me every day. 
maybe not in person, but they are with me in every decision I make here. I ask myself, what kind of a world are we building for them, for all children? I think of my elderly mother, Aileen, who is watching us from home right now and asks, is the system truly there for her when she needs it? If it is true that this chamber can get heated at times, it is because we are fighting for what matters most, for our own loved ones, our communities, for the future of this province. And so despite what it appears at times, we all have a lot in common. We just don't always agree on the path forward. To all of my colleagues, regardless of where you sit here, I congratulate you and I wish you and your loved ones all the best. I look forward to working with you in the years ahead to build an Ontario we can all be proud of. Thank you. Member statements. The member for <coughs> Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate many organizers and volunteers across the riding of Prescott Russell for organizing some nice events that took place over the last few weeks. I had the pleasure of attending the Glengarry Island Games in the town of Maxville on July 29th, a 74-year-old tradition that is always a success. Uh, the town of Russell Agricultural Fair on August 13th and the town of Vanklikil Agricultural Fair on August 19th and uh, were also uh, successful in hosting many people from the region. I am looking forward to attending the Riceville Fair this coming weekend and I'm sure that it will also be a success. It is nice to see people gathering in social events again. I would like to thank the provincial government and their financial assistance through the Reconnect Festival and Event Program from the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sports. I, I would also like to thank the administration of the Glengarry Memorial Hospital in Alexandria for inviting me to their hospital so they could teach me about their operations and their issues. It was very pleasant to meet with the CEO and the chair of the board of directors. I would also like to thank all the ministers, parliamentary assistants, and provincial government staff for participating to the AMO conference last week. It, was, it is very important to have a good relationship with all of our 444 municipalities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for London West. Since 2015, London West residents Sandy Mikulachki and Nicole Spryatt have helped outstanding low-income students attend post-secondary with a Mikulachki scholarship of $5,000 for up to four years. This government's changes to OSAP, however, mean that the scholarships they award to some of the most impressive and deserving students in Ontario are clawed back a policy they view as both merciless and inane. A recent recipient was a young woman whose single mom was on Ontario Works. She had earned a 92 percent average while managing to save $6,000 by working two jobs seven days a week. For these efforts, she was punished with a $2,200 reduction to her OSAP grant, effectively a 37 percent tax on her savings, and another $1,100 reduction for each of the four years of her scholarship. Her OSAP loan was also reduced. Since RESPs are excluded from OSAP calculations, as they should be, Sandy asks, are we saying to these impoverished kids, good that you saved, but you should have known at age 13 while your heat was being turned off to open up an RESP? Sandy's campaign to end these punitive clawbacks has taken on new urgency with the rising cost of living hitting low-income families the hardest. Sandy says, and I agree, that helping low-income students to break the cycle of poverty should not be a partisan issue. So I ask today, will this government commit to finally ending its perverse and heartless OSAP clawbacks?
statements. The member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your statement is not in order. <laughs> Speaker, I rise today to pay homage to a true gentleman from my riding. Gidiga Magizabum has begun his journey to the spirit world. Doug Williams was a much-loved elder, knowledge keeper, and former chief of Curve Lake First Nation. In 1972, he was one of the first graduates of Trent University's newly created Indian and Eskimo Studies program. That program would eventually evolve into Trent's current Indigenous Studies. Doug retained a close relationship with Trent and would eventually become an Associate Professor and Director of Studies in the Indigenous Studies PhD program. But Doug wasn't just an educator of Indigenous Studies, he was also a defender of treaty rights. He was the subject of a court case in the early 1980s that led to a landmark decision on First, Na First Nation treaty rights to tr traditional harvesting. On one particular day, Doug was caught more than 60 frogs, 6-0, while waiting for the game warden to come and charge him. When asked why he caught so many, he said he wanted to make sure it was obvious what he was there to do. Doug was also an author. His book, Michisagi Nishnabek, This Is Our Territory, published in 2018, tells the story of his people in Curved Lake. And if you have the chance to read it, I highly recommend it. As you read the words, you can actually hear his voice speaking them. Thank you, Gidiga, for your teachings and for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with me. Thank you. The member for Guelph. I to rise to give my first member statement of the 43rd Parliament. I want to thank Guelphites for trusting me with their vote, and I will continue to work hard to be your voice at Queen's Park. I campaign on a promise that I would push for solutions to the housing affordability crisis and the homelessness addictions and mental health crisis so many people are facing in our community. Speaker, I want to acknowledge and thank Guelph City Council, Wellington County, social service agencies, private developers and donors who have all come together to build three vitally important permanent supportive housing spaces in my riding with wraparound mental health and addiction supports. Housing the most vulnerable will improve people's quality of life and reduce pressure on our stressed health care system and hospitals. It will also address the many challenges that small businesses in our downtown are facing. To realize these benefits, Speaker, we need the province to chip in with some operating funds. Speaker, every $10 invested in permanent supportive housing saves the province $21.72 in other costs. So I urge the government to work with us to respond to the Ontario big city mayors, partner with the city of Guelph and municipalities across the province who are putting forward solutions to address the homeless crisis, as well as providing mental health and addiction services and support for the most vulnerable in our community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to rise in the House today for my first member's statement. I would like to thank my constituents in Richmond Hill for re-electing me. Thank you for your support and trust in me, and I'm committed to serve Ontarians and be a voice of my constituents in Richmond Hill. I'm thankful that I will continue to serve the seniors with Minister Cho and his, as his parliamentary assistant. We will work tirelessly together to plan our serve our seniors. I'd like to take this opportunity to draw your attention to the upcoming Moon Festival. When the moon is full, mankind is one. This year, Moon Festival falls on September the 10th when families get together at scenic sports or parks for moon appreciation parties and eat mooncakes. The city of Richmond Hill and Markham has been celebrating this with the communities for the past 12 years. This year, it will be held at the parking lot at King Square. Come and enjoy the full moon, share the festive food and cultural performances. Of course, 
there will be lanterns for kids. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to rise uh, first time to give my member statement in the 43rd Parliament. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the Association of Municipalities of Ontario and the City of Ottawa for hosting this year's AMO conference. The AMO conference presents an opportunity for the provincial government to have extremely productive meetings with our municipal partners. These vital discussions are influential in securing the ongoing and future success of our province. Speaker, municipal governments get the opportunity to individually meet the various ministries and discuss important relevant topics specific to their communities. Through AMO, Ontario's 444 municipalities work together to achieve shared goals and meet common challenges. Mr. Speaker, investing in our local communities remains a top priority for our government as we know how important it is for the people of Ontario to have investments that will promote their health and safety. Speaker, the government is building Ontario's future by investing in health care, infrastructure, education, community safety, and transportation in municipalities across the province to best serve their individual needs and improve the quality of life for the residents. Our government, alongside our municipal partners, will continue to get it done for the people of our great province. And Mr. Speaker, we will leave no stone unturned to make sure that we will continue to deliver for the people of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.